Welcome everybody who is listening. This is Mr. Orvin and I'm going to teach uh, lesson number one of Computing Fundamentals or Module A of IC3 GS5. Okay. Uh, operating systems, as you know, is an example is Windows or if you're using Macintosh or Apple, Apple products in a desktop, you have a Macintosh uh, Mac operating system. If you're using iPhone, of course, your iOS is your operating system. If you're using other type of phones or brand of phones, mostly you will be using the Android uh, operating system. OK, so what are we going to use uh, to learn today? The function of an operating system popular desktop operating systems, user accounts and profiles, power on and power off procedures, power options, using the start button, navigating the Windows desktop, using the taskbar, accessing the settings app, accessing the control panel, customizing the Windows desktop, the features of mobile operating systems and operating systems updates. So it's not long, don't worry, it's just 30 slides as you can see from uh, here at the notification bar. So let's start with an operating system. What is an operating system? Another name for operating system is system software. OK, operating system or system software. OK, now every computer requires an OS in order to function. Actually, when we say computer, we said that basic computer is hardware and software. I told you already yesterday that hardware is the physical aspect of the computer. When we say physical, it is the part of the computer that you can touch, you can see, you can hear, you can smell, Yes, as I told you, you can smell it because when it's burning, you can smell, right? Uh, burning means there is a smoke or yeah, something is wrong. Okay, because that's part of the troubleshooting techniques. Use your senses first. Okay, what's wrong with the computer? You have to use what you can see, what you can uh, hear. Okay, what because some beeping sound will happen. OK, uh, you can see sometimes that the monitor is not working or it's blank. So those are what we are saying, the physical aspect of the computer, and it is the hardware part. Now, the software part is the operating system or the system software. Application program is just additional, OK, because these are the tools that we use in order for us to do particular tasks in a computer. But even if you don't have the application program first, let's say you do not have the Word, Excel, PowerPoint, uh, whatever application you're, that you're using or that you want to use, okay? So let's say that's not yet there, but if you have operating system and you have the hardware, you still have computer, okay? As simple as that. OK, users and application programs interact with the operating system. Uh, desktop operating systems are used on desktop and laptop computers. This is different on mobile operating systems, OK, or your smartphones operating systems. That's why this is our first topic now. OK, it is released in various versions and editions which determine the features that are available. It includes a desktop, which is the central place from which you begin working. So. This is the desktop. This is the Windows operating desktop. So when you turn on your computer and you log in, OK, this is what you're going to see. OK. What are the different uh, desktop operating systems? We have the Windows, the Mac operating systems or Macintosh OS. Uh, if you are using a MacBook, 
you might probably are familiar with the Mac OS. I'm not sure where are we now with the operating system, what version, maybe it's 11 or maybe it's 12 Mac OS version. 11 or 12, I'm not sure, okay, because I am not a Mac user, okay. Uh, we have Linux and Unix, okay, as another operating system. These are not popular at all because especially on your uh, generation, okay, on your age or with your age, uh, you're probably just now seeing this two words, Linux and Unix, okay, it's an operating system. It's an old operating system, actually Mac Macintosh operating system or this iOS that you are using right now. It came or it was developed using the Linux and Unix operating system. OK. OK, common operating system features are user accounts, user profiles and built in power of procedures. So this is what uh, we're going to focus today, okay, because there are a lot of features of operating system that includes the file management will be, which will be the a separate topic because of course we're using computers and we have, uh, sorry, what happened? Mm -hmm. Okay, we are using operating system uh, or computer and that includes files okay so uh, most likely if you use an op uh, a computer you will deal with files you will have to create a document an excel file you have to save it okay you have to open it and so on okay so that is dealing with file and we call it file management will be on another topic for now we are going to just introduce to you uh, operating system features, which is first the user accounts. When you go to a computer, uh, let's say an example is when you did your exam in module B here at Geotech, uh, you have to log into a computer to a Windows operating system. At that time, we gave you that account, which is the geotech.lab, L-A-B, okay, and you log in with the password that we gave you also geotech2012 okay but there will come a time that when you will come here and study here you will use your own account like the username is your student id number and the password will be the geotech email password that was given to you so that's different because the one that we gave you geotech.lab okay we use that for that exam purposes okay your account will be a student account okay now with this different accounts it has a profile okay so that's what we are going to talk about here uh -huh. Ooh, i think it's not there okay so what is a profile it is something that when you log on okay example is this this is my computer, what you're seeing on your screen. This is my desktop, okay? When I log into this computer that I'm using right now, this is what I will see because this is my own. This is what we call a profile, okay? Whatever you did on your computer, if you log in with your account, that's yours, okay? If you log in with Geotech Lab, for example, then it's not yours. It belongs to the geotech.lab, whoever he is or she is. But of course, uh, nobody owns that except the teacher of geotech or the IT admin of the geotech, of geotech, okay? So that's, uh, we use that only for the exams, okay? And special purpose, okay? But for you, when you start creating or logging in with your account, you will see that it will start maybe around five minutes. It needs some time because it's going to set up your profile. Okay, the default profile for a student. It is the it is what will happen when you first use a computer with your account. When the that computer encounter that account, okay, at the first time. Okay. So that's what we are talking about when we say user profile. Aside from this, 
Okay, when you log into a network computer, like when, when you go to the computer lab, okay, and then you are a student, whatever permission set by the IT department, permission means what can you do? Can you download? Can you install? Okay, your computer, the computer that you're using that time and you log in, okay, will inherit, meaning it will get from the server and apply, okay, to the to that computer while you are using with that account. When you log off and somebody else, okay, somebody else will be uh, using that, whatever his or profile or his or her profile will be, then it will uh, it will be applied to him or to that computer at that time that he or she is logged on. Called profile. So let's proceed. Uh, if you have any question, again, you raise your hand or just say, Excuse me, Mr. Orven. Okay, I have a question. So that's it. Okay, built in power of procedures. What is the power of? Of course, shutting down the computer. Why is it very important? Because uh, number one is your power uh, management. OK, not only that you're using the computer, but it's very important that the power management is being taken care of uh, with this computer. OK, I'm going to discuss that further. Let's just go to here. These are your power of Windows computer options. OK, when you click on the start and then you click on power, these are the different different uh, things that you can do shut down the start and sleep i think you're very much familiar with the shutdown and the restart shutdown is totally your computer will shut down although uh, there is just a part of the computer that is still turned on which is the uh, cmos or yes the cmos is where there is a in in built in battery inside the computer that keeps the date and the time, okay, because that should not be lost. Also, there should be a permanent memory, which is we call the ROM, read-only memory, where it should not be uh, erased when even if you shut down. Why? Because the instructions on how the computer will turn on is being saved there, okay, in that memory. Anyway, uh, shut down and restart. It's very self-explanatory. We will discuss later on what is a sleep. Okay, now there's additional here. Aside from shutdown and restart, you have the sleep. You have the hibernate. Okay, what is the difference between these two? This is very important. Okay, sleep leaves the computer on, but turns off the screen and puts work into memory. It happens always on your mobile phone. OK, so uh, if you go to the settings and display, so let's say. OK, I'm not sure if you're seeing this. OK, so. Sorry, yeah. Okay, I don't know if you're seeing me, but uh, right now, what I'm doing is I'm uh, looking at my mobile phone, if you're seeing this, and then on the settings and display and brightness, settings, display and brightness, there's an auto lock. Okay, when you have an auto lock, that means your uh, screen will sleep. Okay, the, the monitor. OK, the monitor will turn off only the monitor, only the screen. OK, it, it's the same with your desktop or your laptop. OK, so the um, when when a computer is in a sleep mode, that means the screen is turned off. OK, aside from that, the fan also is turned off. OK, the fan, if you're hearing that on your computer or your laptop, 
It is the one that's blowing the air to your memory or to your motherboard so that it will help cool down. OK, this uh, chips, OK, or whatever this, uh, the, the, the computer itself. OK, so that is what we call sleep. Why is this important? Why was this introduced? To help our computers save energy or power. OK, we do not want it to always use the power if we're not using we just want it to turn on and keep it turned on okay at least it is saving something on the power or the energy okay another is the hibernate okay are you familiar with the hibernate what's the difference of this with the sleep if the sleep just turn on the uh, turn off the screen and the fan hibernate will really shut down okay however before it shut down it will write open files and programs to storage and turns off the system okay so it will save everything that you're doing right now it will save okay aside from it will save the files it will also save where you are what you were doing what page you were uh what uh website or site you were open or you open on a web browser for example this okay if i hibernate when i uh wake up from hibernation wake up from sleep wake up from hibernation all of these things will still be there okay so that's the difference but how did he do that he did that by Okay, he did that by writing a program, meaning writing a file. Okay, this, 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 this is what is opened. This is where he is, what page, what slide, and so on and so forth. Is it maximized? It is not. So he saves that on the CMOS. Okay, or he saves that file on the computer so that when we turn it again, there is something that the computer will open and he knows what to do. OK, so that's what we call hibernate. Do you have any question for now? Anybody? No. OK, thank you very much. So let's continue looking at the Windows 10 desktop. OK, so this is how it looks like. I've shown you also mine. Uh, start button is very important. The search box or the Cortana. You can change this. What is the Cortana? Cortana is like the Siri of the Windows operating system, if you're familiar with that. OK, of course, you have the taskbar. So this black uh, bar at the bottom is what we call the taskbar and the different desktop icons. OK, navigating around the desktop, you need a pointing device. It's either you're using a mouse like what I'm doing. There's a pointer, that arrow pointer that is moving right now. OK or you have a touch screen right now also i'm touching my screen okay so mobile phones of course use uses touch screen okay so using a pointing device you can either click once to select an item or double click to activate or open an item so example is this I click this, okay, I selected it. When I double click, then I activate or open it. Right now it's opening as you can see. I'm going to close it, that's an example. Okay, if you want to right click on something, most likely this is where you want to see see the properties of that icon or item or folder or file okay so this is when you right click okay this is the right click some uh window will pop up okay now using the keyboard a number of features can be accessed through the keyboard you have your arrow the tab keys if you use that in your typing lessons in uh, basic it1 and also when you are using that in microsoft word tab the functions f1 f2 f3 the different numbers the scroll bars uh, sorry the the arrow up down 
Okay, so this is what he is talking about. A number of features can be accessed through the keyboard. Now using a touch screen, tap to open, select, or activate an item. You're familiar with this. I'm just going to read. Double tap to open a file or a folder. Press and hold, long press to show information or open a shortcut or cut, uh, shortcut menu. Okay, using the start button and start menu, click the start button or press the Windows key. Okay, so in your, if you're using a Windows laptop, there is a Windows key. Okay, at the uh, line of control, function, alt, spacebar, and so on. Okay, so Windows, the same icon as you're seeing right now here. Can you see this? When it's showing this, window am i sharing my screen properly okay so i'm going to press this i'm not sure if you're seeing this uh wait a minute let me just uh, stop sharing okay Give it some time. I'm going to start sharing now again. And I'm going to share my desktop. Okay. So can you see whatever, whenever I click the start button, can you see this uh, start window or whatever? Yes. Anybody? Uh, can you describe what I'm doing right now? I click the power and see that from your screen. Anybody, please give me a big feedback. Can you see sleep, shut down, restart on your screen when I click what yes. I'm doing? Can, can yes, you see yes, the mouse that is moving right now? Yes, we can. Yes, oh, yes, yes. Thank you very much. I'm just not sure because I'm not seeing whatever you are seeing. Okay. So thank you very much. So this is the start. When you click, this is what you're going to see. Most likely you're going to see whoever is logged in. This is my name because I log in here. This is where you're going to see. Uh, recently added um, applications and the different applications that you can access in your computer. Okay, so that's what we have here at the start. Okay, search box and Cortana is very useful also. Uh, most likely I'm using the search box to do everything. If you, I want to find an application, like I want to use a calculator, I'll just go to the type and type calculator and that's it. This is the application, Turn uh, open it right now. Uh, an example again, if I want to use an Excel file, okay, just turn it on again. Again, search box and double click. Whatever I want to find, I'm just using the search box. Whatever I want to launch, I'm just using the search box. This is the fastest way for me to do these things. Rather than looking at the folder and so on and so forth, like uh, going to this folder, okay, and so on and so forth, okay? So for example, if I'm looking for academic calendar, see here, Okay, documents name academic calendar. Okay, I do not have to go to the folder and then look one by one. So I just need to type it in the search box. That's why I told you this is very useful for me. Okay. So let's proceed. Using a taskbar is also an important part of my life using Windows 10. This is where the, the useful, okay, uh, mostly used uh, application that I'm using. Out, which is my email, uh, Microsoft Teams, Excel, PowerPoint, Word. So those are the things that I'm always keeping here, okay, and Google Chrome, by the way. 
Okay, go global and profile specific settings. So I've discussed you a little bit of what the profile is. So let's just a little bit uh, discuss again. Global settings affect all user accounts on the system, generally related to hardware. And profile specific settings are settings tied to an individual's user's profile. So let's start with the profile specific settings. Okay, this is now what you're seeing on my desktop. This is a profile specific settings. You can see that I arrange my folders. Okay, and my icons to have like that. Okay, this is what we call profile specific settings. If you use this computer and you log in uh, with your account or with another account, it will not be like this. Okay, that's what we call profile specific settings. Okay, the global specific settings affect the whole computer, whoever uses the computer. So an example will, of that will be resolution. For example, if I change the resolution of this computer display settings, okay, I change this to 1920 by 1080. Whoever uses the computer, whatever account he used to use this computer, it will be the same. Okay, so this is what we call global settings. Okay, the settings up is where you can change a lot of these things on the computer. Go to your search box and just type settings and this is the settings application. Okay, so it's an example. I adjusted the display. If I want to uh, make an adjustment about the sound, uh, for example, I want to use a headphone and I, it's not automatically, so I can see that from here. Uh, what else? Um, an input device, okay? So what microphone will I use? Some of you were also familiar already, maybe uh, on using the computer on other purposes like gaming. OK, so you can use this applications. Most likely the display, uh, I told you about the display resolution. What else? Um, there are a lot actually projector. Okay, if you're using a projector, you can go to projecting to this PC and so on. Uh, no, no, I mean in the display also. Display settings. Okay, so let's proceed. Uh, aside from the settings, this there's an old school, old school, okay, when you say old school, an old uh, uh, version of that application, Windows 10, uh, they change it to settings, but when I was, of course, uh, using Windows for more than 20 years already, so I usually use control panel if I want to change some settings. Okay, so whatever you can do on the settings, that application that I've shown you, you can do that also from here. Okay, but most likely like installing a program or uninstalling a program, you're going to go here. Uh, for me personally, I prefer using this control panel because this is where I grew up. OK, so this is how I do things. Like if I want to change the appearance and resolution, this is where I will go. OK, uh, what else? Installing a program, connecting to the Internet, OK, and so on and so forth. Okay, so this is about, yeah, check boxes, radio buttons in your control panel. Okay, you can uh, um, experience or encounter, encounter this thing. So if a radio button, that means you are just selecting one from these two choices. If it is a check boxes, you can select shutting down systems to hibernate also by default you have only sleep 
uh, restart and shut down, I can add their hibernate. Okay, that means if you have check, you have check boxes, you can select most or more than one. Okay, you also have a drop down list, like for example, this one. Okay, dialog boxes are display on top of all other windows. Uh, it accepts user input, stay open until you close them. So there are different dialog boxes that can be used. Uh, an example of that is when you were using Microsoft Word. Okay, so if you click this, this is what we call a dialog box. Okay, if we click, this is the launcher of that. Okay, and then you will have dialog box here. I've shown you also that when I navigate through a file or a folder, you right click and click properties. You will also again have a dialog box. Okay. Mm, let us proceed. Okay, I told you already about global settings, whatever affects the computer and everybody who's using the computer. Okay, that's a global setting. Sample is screen resolution, password protection, and power management options. Okay. Profile specific settings includes those that affect only particular user. So if you want to change the background or the picture color of your computer, uh, the desktop background, the windows color, the screen savers, and so on then it's only when you use your computer other than other user when they use the same computer will not have those things okay now let's proceed to your mobile operating systems your os have android and ios which is of course the most popular ones okay what is the characteristics of a mobile operating system. It is optimized for touch screen, small size, fast file transfer, okay, and accessing cellular networks. Easy on battery power and system resources can be used for many computing tasks, but limited, okay, of course. Limited screen because you have a limited screen, you have a limited memory, that means even you can have a lot of computing tasks. It's going to be limited on those aspects. OK. Uh, touch screen navigation on mobile OS. Uh, you can have this top touch and hold, swipe and slide, drag, pinch and spread. So you're more familiar with this. OK, tap lightly, tap items with your fingertips. Touch and hold, that means uh, if you stay your finger on a particular item, okay, then something will happen. Then swipe and slide your window, okay, drag. For example, you have an, uh, an application or an, an app that you installed. You want to move it to another area, you can drag. And pinch and spread. That means if you want to uh, make a bigger, okay, or zoom in. Okay, that's uh, equivalent of zooming in. Okay, so example is this home screen, whatever part of this you can read from here. Uh, widget, app shortcuts. So these are the shortcuts or the launcher. Now, if you put them all these applications together, you put them on top, it will create automatically an app folder. Okay. Uh, most likely, even if it is Windows or Mac, it will have the same idea. Like status icon, notifications icon, and so on. Okay, let's proceed to the next topic. Updates. What is an update? An update can be one of this. Okay, patches, updates, and service packs. When you say patch, a file of programming code inserted into an existing program to fix a known problem. Okay, so for example, I bought an uh, antivirus, let's say Kaspersky. I installed it. Okay, then I need to update it at first. Okay, because uh, when you have an installer, it's just going to be the basic. Now, you have to activate and update it, whatever. Okay, on the first time you use it, 
Okay, because an update is a file or collection of software tools that resolve security issues and improve performance. Release as necessary. So example is your operating system in your iOS or Apple and have the update at least once a month, I think. Okay, so you have to check and update that. Uh, that's why it's released as necessary. Now, for particular program, like I said, antivirus, there will be patches. Patches means just a particular program or uh, it's an update, like when you say patch in an antivirus, these are the list of viruses, okay? The new virus that was detected, okay? It's temporary because once update is being given already, then it already includes all these patches, okay? Now, what is a service pack? A, co a collection of updates released together, okay? Uh, there are some computers that release a service pack, like for example, in Office, we don't only talk about Word, Excel, we talk about all the Microsoft Office that is in your computer. For example, Outlook is also a part of Microsoft Office 365. So whenever you receive an update, it will be a service pack uh, that includes Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, OneDrive, and so on and so forth. Okay, so that's, that. those are the different updates. Okay, so it's important for us to know if you're going to do an automatic updating in computer laboratory setup, most likely they're updating it uh, automatically every five o'clock in the afternoon, for example, or seven o'clock in the evening. Okay, when there is no more people using the computers, then they will be updating automatically. Okay, so it happens also that when we are doing exam, it will be interrupted because these updates are automatic. Now you can have it manual, okay? Now in an operating system, as I said also earlier, mobile operating system push updates out to their customer base. User will see a notification that an update is available and ready to be installed. So most likely if you see a dot on your settings, you go to your settings and uh, general. Okay, and you can see there the first time about and software update. Okay, so me as a user, my advice is to update your system always. Okay, especially the operating system, iOS, okay, the Apple, iPhone, uh update it okay when you update it put it on a charger because when you update at least 50 percent of your battery will be uh, consumed okay to look for updates for your android phone connect to a wi-fi tap settings tap apps and then tap settings okay so uh but i think to look for updates for your iphone Settings, general software update. Yeah, this is what basically, how, how are you going to do that? Okay, on Android, I'm not familiar. Okay, so that it, that's it. Okay, that's the end of our discussion. Okay, the function of an operating system. Popular desktop operating systems, user accounts and profiles. Power on and power off procedures, power options, using the start button, navigating the Windows desktop, using the taskbar, accessing the settings app, accessing the control panel, customizing the Windows desktop, the features of mobile operating system and system updates. So that ends our lesson number one about operating systems. I will stop the recording now and wait for me. Ciao.